Hello, good morning, my creative friends. Dr. Manette Briarden here with Painting in Your Pajamas. This is a weekly YouTube live series where I will be sharing different thoughts, ideas, and lessons around life, creativity, and everything, visual journaling, and sacred circle designs, things that I am passionate about. And in the month of December, I'm going to be working in this, what I'm calling an end of year reflection, reflections journal. I made this journal out of some just recycled canvas boards that I had. I painted over them and added some new sacred circle designs to these based on my son Connor's gorgeous, gorgeous designs. And starting on Monday, December 5th, I'll be going live every week, Monday to Thursday at 6.30 a.m. And I'll be working in this journal and sharing with you my favorite end of year reflection questions. And what's happened in the past is that I would sit down with this list of questions like I do every year and maybe spend you know, an hour or two kind of quickly going through the questions. And this year, I wanted to take a little more time. It's been a really topsy-turvy kind of crazy year. And I wanted to be able to think about the year that's passed, look at, you know, what is there to honor and celebrate? What is there to release? You know, what needs to change? What do I want more of, less of as I go into the new year? So many of us started 2022 from this place of hope and positivity and thinking that things were going to get back to normal after the couple of years of insanity. And they didn't, right? They Things just, I don't know that they're ever going to go back to any sort of semblance of normal and so I had that feeling that I needed to really sit with some of these questions so that I can have a different plan and go into the year a little bit differently and so starting Monday I'll be sharing my reflection questions my personal reflections and creating a page in this handmade book which I'm calling my end of year reflections journal. And I, I want to invite you to play along with me, answer these questions, work in a journal that you create or work in a journal maybe that you've been holding on to for a while. And it's really time to get that journal going and maybe like me, that you really love having some time, getting to the bottom of my mat medium here, love having some reflection time. Let's see, a piece of paper to stick under here so I don't glue all the pages together. So throughout the month of December, Monday to Thursday, 6.30 a.m., I will be right here live. Of course, you can watch at any time you choose. And after making the journal yesterday, and you can go back and watch the video of how I made a really simple handmade journal using an old book. You could use canvas covers like I did, but I realized I wanted to make a cover page, sort of a, an old fashioned title page for this journal rather than just diving right in. So I grabbed a sheet of this music paper. So this particular journal, I'm just using kind of a heavy weight copy paper that's really nice, but anything I can add to the page will help to just make that page a little sturdier so I can <clears throat> continue to work with it. That was probably more than I needed there. So I'm just going to put some of that back. So I am starting with a piece of old music paper and some matte medium. You could absolutely use a glue stick here. 
But what I love about matte medium is it creates a really nice surface to be able to paint on top of. So get that down, trying to get it pretty nice and smooth. Like I said, you know, this isn't um, great mixed media paper, so I'm not really sure what's going to happen in this journal, and we'll just kind of figure it out as we go. And I've also got a all the matte medium off my this isn't like my favorite tool my go-to tool I use for everything is this catalyst wedge I've also got one of my son Connor's fabulous sacred circle designs this is from the December designs in our mindful patterns membership which you can find at manette.teachable.com and I wanted to I have an idea for where I'm going to go, but I don't know how it's going to work. So we're going to see, but I wanted to get one of Connor's designs in here. I want to put a label in here that says 2022 Reflections. Earlier this year at Target, I had found these little rubber letter and number erasers for a dollar a bag. They were a fabulous find and they make wonderful stamps. So I'm going to play with those for my 2022. <clears throat> I also have some scraps of this paper, which this is just printed on printer paper also. And I have some scraps to maybe <clears throat> do some writing across the center there. Sorry, I'm a little froggy throated this morning. It was not <clears throat> a great night for sleeping and I was been awake since four this morning, so I've already spent a bunch of time making art for some other projects. So I'm just cutting out this sacred circle design. And we call them sacred circle designs for a few different reasons. Connor and I, <clears throat> earlier this year, launched a brand new membership program called Mindful Patterns. It's a monthly membership where we're looking at integrating creativity and mindfulness practices for more calm, relaxation, and creative play. And we decided not to use the term mandala because mandala is traditionally it's a word from Sanskrit that means sacred circle. And traditionally, these were created in a very specific religious or spiritual context inside of Hinduism and our favorite, the Tibetan Buddhist sand mandalas are incredible. And we felt like it wasn't quite right. It was cultural appropriation to be using a term and Connor, who does all the designs, you know, that he's doing them for creative purposes, not religious purposes. So you'll notice that what you're seeing on the screen looks like a mandala, but we have chosen to call them sacred circles. What I love about these designs and the process of working with them is that circles represent both the sacred whole but all the individual parts they're like these amazing containers i'm a little obsessed with this color right now i've been using it a lot I know it's kind of shiny in the light, and it's funny, it looks a little uh, orange in this uh, dark early morning light down here, but this is a Nova Quinacridone Magenta, and what I love about it is how transparent it is, so it makes a, a great color for layering. Nova Paints is an old company based in Los Angeles. They've been around, I think, for over 50 years, and... They are famous for making these sort of fluid acrylics that are beautiful to work with. They have great colors and their number one client apparently are clients or muralists. So a lot of their 
paints are made for muralists. They're a very affordable paint as well. So I highly recommend checking out Nova Paints. So I want this to get nice and dry. So I have my base sheet of paper. I have glued down a piece of music paper. And then I have added a single layer of my beautiful quinacridone magenta that's transparent, which is exactly what I wanted was that transparency so that I could absolutely see that music paper underneath. And here comes Diego. Are you coming to say good morning? Come on. Yes, he's coming to say good morning. He loves to sit in my lap while I'm making art. It's a good boy. All right, off you go, buddy. It's uh, been super cold here. So what does it say on my computer? It's 17 this morning. Yesterday it was 7. So they have been extra snuggly and looking for those warm spaces. So pardon the sound for just a minute. I'm going to hit this with a dryer. And I haven't quite figured out how to mute myself yet on this system. So bear with me for one second. We have a, a brand new computer and set up in my studio just for recording and doing these YouTube lives and it's on a PC and I have been a Mac girl for literally decades since I went to grad school in the in the 90s and so it's um learning all kinds of new things about working on a on a PC again. Also it's incredibly dry here so so things are are drying pretty rapidly if you're finding that they're not drying as rapidly where you are. Take your time. So this is mostly dry. Mostly dry. I'm almost thinking I want that to be a little bit smaller so I can see a little bit more of the music. So I think maybe I'm going to put it down a hole and then I'm just going to create right over the top of it. But maybe I want to add some color to this one first. So I'm going to bring this over here onto my scrap paper, set that aside for a second. And again, I want to be just working with that transparency. Just using this other piece of music paper as my under paper, let that get nice and painty so that it will uh, Make great collage fodder later. Let me see. I'm going to test that a little bit. That's a little maybe brighter than I want. And this is an end of year reflection journal. I'm kind of feeling the, the green. It's like I really want to honor the growth of the last year and the sorrow and the celebrations. We moved cross country this year from California to Colorado, which was a definite celebration. And of course moving is, all right, those colors are getting mixed in there. So that's just what's gonna happen. And I'm gonna be okay with that. Moving is never easy, even though the move was completely by choice. I always forget that it takes me about six months of just sort of grieving and settling to just really feel planted in a new place. And I'm glad to be past that and feeling happy in my studio and happy in this lovely new community of Loveland, Colorado, where we live now. It's incredibly beautiful here. 
a little tricky because that's curling up on me a little bit, but that's okay. Just trying to get all those edges covered. And this is going to be such a fun page when it gets all painty. And this is going to be a simple process, so I probably won't be here with you super long this morning. And sometimes we need pages that are simple. We don't always need pages that are super complicated. And at any time you're watching, if you're watching live, feel free to make a comment, ask a question. I'll be happy to answer questions as they come into the chat or um, post questions in the comments if you're watching the recording. Drinking up some of my coffee while it's hot. Interesting color choice. It's kind of funky. I know you guys can't see the designs through here, but I can still see them through there. And in a few minutes, I'm going to use a Posca marker to bring some of those patterns back trying to decide if I want to add any more marks to that background page. Something just feeling like keeping this really simple, right? Just kind of honoring this experience, being in that space of this doesn't need to take a ton of time. That it can just take a little time to create this page. You know, it's, I love when I have hours and hours to sit down and create, but that doesn't always happen. Sometimes we just have a few minutes and we need to just be able to get some color on a page or get some meaning on a page, a few words here and there. So starting next week when I'm sharing the questions with you, I'll be doing a lot more journaling on my pages. Getting that more or less even on there. I'm putting matte medium on the front and the back of this design and all over my table as well. So that it adheres really well and that it gets really flat. Mm, got that more or less centered on there. And I cut it in half thinking I was going to spread it out, but it's, um, you know, some of this matte medium. And I ended up putting it back together. So I put the link to download the printout of this beautiful design in the chat. So you should be able to see that. I'll go back and add it a little bit later to the description so it's easy to find as well. And it's an eight and a half by 11 design with a beautiful affirmation on it as well. My gift to you today. And I printed it a little smaller than the actual size to have it fit on my page a little bit better. All right, so interesting that the those lines are super faint, so I know it's super hard for you to see those designs. Even off my wedge so it doesn't get too sticky. I'm going to let that sit there and dry for a minute. And I wanted to have the idea the 2022 reflections journal come right across the center of the design so before i trim the page i'm going to stamp my letters here i'm going to get some black paint and i just grabbed the first one that was hand at hand which was one of the new golden matte acrylics, uh, they're black. And 
and I'm going to use my fingers. So this is going to be pretty messy, am I? Now let's use a brush and maybe not have this be so, well, it's going to be messy, but I love having painty fingers. What I noticed with these is they work great as stamps, but I have to really press them down to get the whole letter on there. I almost grabbed a three until I remembered that this is a reflections journal, not a looking ahead journal. That one will be next. This one is all about looking back. I kind of like this. I'm wondering if I can just use it to add a few more patterns to this page and use up that ink on there. It's kind of fun. A couple more twos. And my fingers are getting very painty. Not liking that. It's a little messy, but I can probably clean it up with some white paint or maybe I'm going to cut the letters out. So I'm just going to see if I can make a couple more twos. You guys are seeing me create in real time. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. They're definitely a little messy. All right, so I'm going to let those dry and figure out what I'm going to do next. I should have brought my baby wipes over here. If you are happen to be watching live, I'd love you to say hello in the chat. Let me know you're here. I know it's early in the morning for most people, but this is my super happy creative time for sure. It's when the world is quiet, the house is quiet, except for the cats. And my hubby, we're both early risers for sure. Get that lid back on my medium there. I'm, a, I'm pretty clean as I work, especially depending on what I'm working on. I, I don't like a super cluttered space. You wouldn't know that a lot of times from looking at my desk and space, but I definitely can get overwhelmed if things start to feel a little too cluttered and busy, so I will often pause, especially my recording space is very small. If you're working in a small space, you might feel the, the same way about needing to have space to work and be able to see what you're working on. This is one of my favorite new tools and it was in my stash and, you know, it was un packing some stuff and just came across it one day and I've been having so much fun with just this little teeny tiny brayer as a way of layering on. And I'm just sort of working intuitively here. Can't really tell you why I'm adding the, the white. I just felt like I wanted to mess that background up a little bit. I'm gonna bring in one of my other favorite colors, this is a, a golden fluid teal. Getting down to the bottom of the bottle down there. I just feel like this piece needs a few more marks. A little more color. And I always work this way 
very intuitively. I have a little bit of an idea before I start sometimes, but not always. Sometimes I just sit down and start writing and often through the writing, then I can figure out where I want to go visually. So my way into a page is often through journaling. For some of you, your way into a page may be putting color down first. That yellow is going to show on there, but let's see. I start adding a little bit of color to this sacred circle design. And again, I'm creating an end of year reflections journal that I'm going to be working in throughout the month of December to just really help me acknowledge, honor, celebrate, grieve all the things that happened this year. It's kind of a big year for us. And I realized I wanted to take my time. I do want some more of that yellow, but I don't want it up there. And really spend some time thinking about what's happened, where I've been, where I'm going. And this is probably the longest amount of time I've ever spent doing that, working on it throughout the month of December. Normally I might sit down for a day or two or an hour or two this is starting to feel a little bit like some celebratory confetti here it's kind of fun important to pause at times and really look at your page, even turn that, that page around. Just to notice what does it need, what's it missing. I'm definitely seeing that it needs more contrast and maybe a little to bring back some of that magenta. Maybe I got a little too much color going on over here. Well, here's the fluorescent magenta. What would happen if I came in with this fluorescent one right over the top? When I'm working with acrylics, I like to work with a really dry brush to create the nice layers that I want. So I may go through a lot of brushes. Okay, those colors aren't dry, so definitely I'm going to give those a minute to dry a little bit more. And this is going to work great to push those colors back, but the page isn't dry enough. But I love working with a super, super dry brush. Let me come back to my letters over here so that my colors are staying put and they're not over blending unless I want them to. I love acrylics. I think they're um, so much fun to work with. I love the ability to create lots and lots of layers. They still aren't quite dry. I can see the little shiny bits on there. What if I did just the 22? Do I want just the 22? Or do I want all of them? Let's see. These definitely aren't dry enough to glue down yet, otherwise I'm going to end up smearing that black everywhere. 
And now that I'm looking at it, these are way too big for my delicate design that I have here. So I won't waste them. I'll stick them over here somewhere or use them on a, another page. But I'm going to do something different. And I think this is... Let's see. Do I have a nice... My ruler over here. I want to have a nice straight edge, but apparently I have disappeared my nice ruler. Let's try just folding this in half. If I cut it, it's just not going to come out straight. Me and cutting. Well, and apparently I can't even fold straight this morning. as well. So that's probably about the right size. Definitely not finished with that background design yet. And I find that the combination of art and writing is always my personal best way through. I am going to go grab a pencil. And when I take the time to do the journaling reflection, my art has more meaning. And for me, creating art with meaning is why I do what I do. I'm very much about art as process, not art as product. Do I like making pretty things? Yes. And sometimes I just want to play and have fun. But often I'm creating art that has a story to tell, that helps me get to know myself a little bit better. Okay, let me grab a pencil. Forgive me for one second. I got my favorite comfiest pair of warm jammies on this morning. I think they have a lot of paint on them. I paint in these a lot. I'm always happy when it's winter time and it's warm enough to wear these. to round the edges of these a little bit. So I'm going to just use this where I cut that circle before. Let's see, let's get that right in the center. I folded that in half so I can do both ends at the same time. See if I can't match the curve. I'm not always this fussy with things, but this morning it's just feeling like part of the honoring of the process. And sometimes it's fun to be fussy about things. That's better. All right. So I'm going to take an, the other piece of this and kind of like in this 22, 2022 over here. So I might glue this in over here. I'll probably gesso this or maybe add some more music paper to my inside cover to make it pretty as well. Again, if you didn't watch the video yesterday, I show how I created a handmade journal using really simple materials. So 
So I'm thinking, what if I just put reflections on here? Kind of figure out what the size of that. Could probably be a little bit bigger. If I started my R here, a little inside of there, and end my S here. My friend Andrea from a work of heart studio taught me a great trick. So I'm writing the word so I can see it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's eleven letters. So one, two, three, four, five. That C is right in the center. One, two, three, four, five. And then if I bring that C here then I'm going to be able to figure out my spacing of my letters a little bit better. And those all could have been a little better, a little squished together, but I have a sense of what it is and I'm kind of liking just having reflections on here. So I'm going to start with my pencil. And if you don't like your own handwriting, you could certainly print this out in a fun font. And if I just give that a little pinch in the center, it'll smooth out when I glue it down. I know where I want that C to go because I don't feel like measuring. Spread those out a little bit more. Let's see if I can make them a little bit wider on this side. And a little bit more spaced out. That's better. Lettering is one of those things that's on my list for 2023 that I would love to learn more about lettering styles. We all just shifted a little bit, not too much. And I'm going to take a, a black Posca and thicken them up. So they all match a little bit. I always like them to be even top to bottom. So I always kind of check to make sure that they're even top to bottom. But this is where I'm going. It's also looking very white against the colorful background. So I have to decide, do I want that to stay white or do I want to add some color? And I would do that before I added the Posca. So I'm going to set that aside for just a minute and I'm going to come back in here and work on this page some more. I like having multiple things to work on at a time. So that I can be more patient for things to dry definitely need to push those colors back and bring back some of those nice magenta layers but I can still see the texture and some of the music underneath so it just looks a little bit neater but I'm still seeing some of that fun color on there again it feels kind of like confetti, like a little bit of celebration happening. And I lost my, come back in with some of that darker magenta. And again, this is what I love about the working with acrylics is, and especially these nice transparent ones, right? It's just I get to keep adding layers and layers. 
until I'm happy. And if I end up not seeing any of that music paper underneath, that's okay too. I know it's there. We're going to a concert in a couple of weeks. I haven't been to a concert in years. And I realize that uh, I spend a lot of time down here and I listen to a lot of audiobooks or art classes, you know, while I'm working on my own stuff. And I haven't been listening to a lot of music. When I was younger, music was such an important part of my life. And so it makes me wonder how can I bring more music back. So I planted that seed with the music page in the beginning. Get that lid back on because I am clumsy and have a tendency to knock things over for sure. So it's coming along. It's easy to get caught up in where to go next. Sometimes it's important just to walk away, let it dry completely, and then continue later. So there will be times when you see me start a page, but maybe not finish a page. And I want this to be 100% completely dry, and I'm going to come in with my Posca's and bring back the patterns and lines of the mandala so they show again. And I'm trying to decide here. Bring that teal back and maybe this is going to be where the teal is going to come in. You definitely don't want to use your nice Posca markers or any kind of pen over the top of wet acrylic, it will absolutely destroy the tips of your pens. Trust me, I made that mistake. So I added a little water to this one to make that a little more transparent, just enough so that I can see my pencil lines underneath. I love the catalyst wedge for really getting beautiful thin layers of paint. Test that on there. Love it. Love where it's going. Now I'm wondering, do I want to come back and just cover all that up? Hmm. I'm just going to stay curious, look at it for a little while. I'm not really sure. I am excited to work on this mandala design. So my background's not dry, but my mandala's pretty dry. I'm going to come in with a, just a black posca. I can find one that works. And you can see I don't need to worry too much about the center because that's going to get covered up. So I'm going to work on bringing back some of these beautiful floral designs. Mm, that, that mania may not be quite as dry as I want it to. And I love taking Connor's gorgeous designs. Connor's been creating the Sacred Circle designs for me since he was in high school, I think we figured it's been five years, even when I was doing a lot more business coaching for creative, all my workbooks would include these designs because our brains get really 
full when we're trying to take in a lot of information and there's something so calming and supportive about simply sitting and coloring. And I love making my own original art and I also love sitting down and just coloring, especially in the evening in front of TV after the busy day or as part of my morning process. I will spend some time with one of these designs. I love incorporating them into other art that I'm making. Loving adding this black. It's exactly what it needed. Getting that contrast in there. Right, so now you can see when I come in and put this down, I'm going to have this gorgeous pattern behind over the top of it. And I'm not going over all the lines. I may come back with other poscas and add more color. makes it a lot easier to work on these when you turn your page. So much easier for your hand to reach so that you're not twisting your hand. It helps keep those lines straighter and more even. So turning your work around is always useful for a variety of different things. So I'd be curious to hear from others either in the chat if you're watching live, although I don't think there's anyone watching live with me this morning, but in the, the comments, do you have a favorite end of year process or ritual? I know a lot of people love to create a word of the year. And I think it's so important before we create a word of the year to reflect back and make sure that we're really setting a powerful intention and picking a word that really captures all of our heart's desires for the coming year. And so my goal with these questions is to help myself and you get more clarity. And so by the end of the month, I'll be creating a spread to honor, maybe in this journal or maybe in a different journal, but uh, something to celebrate and honor the, the word of the year and the intentions that I want to set. I love setting energetic intentions and I love setting goals, but I prefer shorter term goals. So I like to look kind of month by month and think, you know, what is possible for me to accomplish in the next month or three months? We set big, ginormous, grandiose goals. And then we don't make progress. We tend to get discouraged and give up, which can really impact our self-trust when we set goals and don't achieve them. So I'm a fan of bite-sized goals. 
that build on each other and they help us build our self-confidence and self-trust. It's easy to get pretty down on ourselves. And I think that's why people started talking about intentions because there used to be this, oh, I'm going to set all these big goals and then, you know, by February I've already forgotten what those goals are. And so it's super important to just be mindful of your own awareness and attitude towards goals and attention, intentions. I can make dots all day long and poscas are so magical for making beautiful, perfect little dots. And just by adding black and white to this, I'm creating this simple design doesn't have to be complicated. I tend to be a more is more kind of girl and I love lots of bright colors, especially when I'm working in my sacred circles coloring pages. They tend to, to be bright. And I'm kind of following Connor's original design and pattern here and kind of not, right? I'm just picking up some of those lines and designs and patterns. I don't feel the need to do all of them. So I'm simplifying it a little bit. And I'm definitely, I think, going to want to come back with a nice turquoise in here. And add one more little spot of color. And again, if you're watching the replay or joining me late, I did put the link to the design, the sacred circle design that I'm using in the chat as my gift to you today. If you choose to use it. And I'm super happy with where this is going. And I'm definitely going to want to bring that blue into other places on the page. So I'm probably going to take that same teal and add some of that to my mandala design. Poscas are a great way to neaten up the edges of things or even expand them. You can see I'm kind of messy. I'm definitely not a perfectionist, so I can celebrate that. And even though I'm not a perfectionist, I can get caught up in the sort of the fussy details, right? And I can want to keep playing and making marks and adding more and more. And sometimes I get asked the question, actually I get asked it a, a fair amount about uh, how do I know when it's finished? And I just know, I can't tell you how I know, but I just kind of let the piece speak to me. I will often walk away from a piece and come back later.
Let's see. Find a little small brush here. Come in with some of this blue. And you might be seeing this or watching part of it and thinking, you know, I don't have time to do this. And I used to tell myself that story as well about I don't have time for art. I don't have time. I need hours and hours. And that's definitely uh, just a story that we tell ourselves that we can't create in fits and spurts. But I have found that just five or ten minutes of putting color on paper can calm me down, whether it's coloring one of the designs in our Mindful Patterns membership or whether it's turning to a page in my art journal and just making a painty background, allowing myself permission to just take five to 15 minutes to play. You'd be amazed how much better you feel and if you spent 10 or 15 minutes a day or even a few times a week on a project, you make steady progress, right? You don't ever make progress on projects if you think, oh, I can't work on that. It's going to take hours. And I know space constraints can be an issue, like it can be a pain. I'm very grateful for the luxury of space that I have to play and create in. And so I encourage you to create little project boxes where you can just pull out one little shoe box or plastic box that has, or cardboard, like those photo boxes you can get at Michael's or the big jewel boxes. are great project boxes. Put your knitting or your Zen tangle or your art journal. Make little kits for yourself so that it feels easy and you have the constraint of the supplies that are in the box. You don't ever need to have access to all of your supplies because that can create a lot of overwhelm when there's too many choices. So I actually encourage you to Create constraints. Constraints breed creativity when you have fewer things to work with, like pick a few colors of paint before you start and only let yourself work with those colors and not all your colors. You will find it's so much easier to make time, it's easier to set up, it's easier to clean up. Even though I have a lot of space, I do this as well. I tend to keep my different things sorted. All right. I think I have more paint on me than on the page. What a beautiful way to start the morning with painty fingers and painty pages. Again, this isn't a fancy page. It's a fairly simple page. And I'm feeling pretty happy with it, so I'm going to let that dry over here. And I'm going to work on my letters. I'm going to a bigger, thicker black Posca here. And again, I like incorporating my own handwriting into my projects. It makes them more meaningful and if you really don't like your own handwriting then you could absolutely print this out in a favorite font all right 
and it's coming together nicely. I'm still not super happy with the, the colors and texture of the background. I'm wanting it actually to be a little more solid than I originally thought I would. So I'm gonna wait for that piece to dry completely so that I don't smear the letters. And I may come back in and add some more patterns as well. To the design, but again, it's at a place where it just needs to be nice and dry, but I'm thinking I'm actually going to come back in with some white one more time. Get a really nice dry brush. So I'm going to put a layer of white over this. Let it dry and then come back one more time with the magenta so that I get a nice flat magenta without all that color underneath it. So don't care that I can't see my collage anymore. I still know it's there. The texture, the meaning of the music is there. But by putting the white over the top, it creates something a little more coverage on there, and then my magenta is going to really pop. I'm trying not to get it in that wet blue, because it was just looking messy, and messy wasn't what I wanted. So I messy didn't go with this beautiful sacred circle design, which is very precise and busy at the same time, right? So there's a lot of detail in this already. When I had the detail in the background, also it was a visual distraction. And I don't want that. Boy, man, it's dry here. It's drying so fast this morning. So I'm going to hit this with my dryer a little bit and then come back in with that pink paint. And then I'm going to be probably done for the moment. brush clean and dry again. And I'm going to try the fluorescent magenta and see if it is what I want. Oh, it is. I was thinking I was going to want that um, darker quinacridone, but getting down to the bottom of the barrel here with this one. This is an interesting brush. It's like a rough bristle brush for working with acrylics. And it has, there's a lot of texture in the brush marks, which I'm kind of liking, although sometimes I like a much flatter. I feel like the colors are coming together a little bit better. Still seeing a little bit of the pattern and design in a few places around the edges, but that's okay. It's so much calmer than it was before. All right, so I can feel right now that I need to step away from this, let it dry completely, add any final details, and add my word once I make sure that 
both the background and the word itself are completely dry. And so when I come back next Monday, you'll be able to see the finished design. I'll also be sharing it on my Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram at Dr. Manette Riordan, super easy to find, or Mindful Patterns LLC, either one. But I'm happy with this sweet page as just um, a commemorative of and a title page of my Reflections Journal for 2022. Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Manette Riordan, the founder of Mindful Patterns, and you can find out more about what we're up to at manette.teachable.com. Have a great rest of your day.